So I just wanted to show people how strong this light is. This, this does have north light, but we have all the nice and soft. It's bright enough in here, but I just wanted you guys to see how strong the shadows are. We're using that 650 watt. I'm just using chalks today, and we're all just like spread out. It's a small group. We have our great model, Cheryl Ann. We're on a break. I'm already, my back is stiff. I'm not used to doing this for so long. I'm forcing Scott to give me this on We're going to. Kristen, that's nice. Ooh, kind of going in between. Oh, Sharon's got a nice big pillow. Oh, so Scott is trying to do these, uh, I guess, pen and inks. These sort of, we're, all, we're both trying to do new things. So, what is this? This is, um, it's from Focus. This is a Pigma brush, archival ink. Okay. Scott loves to do them very illustration-like. Let's look at some of the other ones. I don't actually like outlining them. But that's why it's so cool that we're so different. What you want to do is when you draw in the figure, okay? See how great like that is? Maybe he's giving a demo. You should be drawing these shadow patterns as much as you draw the line here. That's why we have this this nice this nice light here. Okay, so as you get in the these areas here, you also want to draw the shadow pattern as carefully as you draw this. Okay, so you want to draw that and and look at you know exactly where does that come? I'm doing that even with my brush and ink ones. You draw that shape. Okay, the way where even if little shapes here, they come up. So when you get this shape here, you don't just kind of shade it here. You kind of say, okay, what is that shape here, the shadow pattern, and then what is this shape here? All right, and so you draw those shapes in wherever they are, and then what you do is you just think of two values. So then you just think, okay, everything in this is, is in the shadow, but you've drawn the actual shape because this actual shape yeah. of how the shadow is, it's as descriptive as this mm -hmm. actual anatomy construction line. This is actually showing you what's happening in these muscles in here. It's, it's just, you draw these just as carefully as you draw these, um, these, these, these construction lines. Okay, you know what I mean? yeah. And that's all unique, because what happens is you start to do a lot of this, but it's not actually this actual contour, it isn't the contour of your figure. Yeah. So, you so he's talking about actually outlining the shadow shape, yeah. creating an actual positive and negative. Down. Not just um, shading to, and then having like kind of fuzzy edges. The outside line that there's nothing there. But this is the most important thing is drawing the shadow. We started off with three minutes. And we're kind of just going to stick around like three, eight, ten, twelve. Scott used to use a lot of just like charcoal pencil, pastel pencils, but these inks are being very, very definite. So it's hard to get like subtlety, so it's all very, very strong line. Use spots. Would I just use it as like to delineate maybe a shoulder? Because I didn't want to do too much. I didn't want to have the purple over there on the other side either. So yeah, I started off with shadow. Every drawing, I just started with the purple. And then I went in with the yellow. And then on top of that, I did the peach. I use my finger a little bit to soften, but I also am trying to kind of leave some of it also. And you can use, that's why I use this toned paper. A little bit of the gray paper is showing through. I was starting to get tired here. So I was, you know, this is the first time I've done it in years. So after drawing for about like an hour, hour and a half, you know, your shoulders start to um, get sore. But I think that this way is more enjoyable for me because I'm not thinking in detail. Um, I'm really thinking about just big shapes. Some poses are harder than others. Like when you have lots of crisscrossing, um, 
but we took some good breaks. I try and think of these more as just painting with dry medium. And I, I never really do anything with the heads. I really hardly do anything with the fingers or toes. It's just indicating. So a lot of my figures are headless. Um, if I indicate the hair, it's just a little bit, or I indicate the face, it's just a little bit. Because the more you go, for me, the more I go into doing any sort of features, I, you know, if anything is just the tiniest bit off, man, as humans, we just see that. And um, it's so disturbing. I can see that, you know, I'm trying to just get some soft and some strokes. So I have smoothed out with my fingers and then even on top, just seeing strokes. So as we keep doing these, I'm gonna experiment with trying different ways of applying the pastel and probably just trying different color combinations too. You know, depending on the model, what um, they inspire me, you know, if they have light skin, dark skin. And this was the very last one. So it was fun. I'm at my friend Sharon's house and we're about to go away to a little cabin and she's telling people who are doing shooting practice at a little shooting range down by her yard to just that we're leaving. <laughs> it's so country. And then there is a motocross speedway over there. Maybe I'll be able to video. There's my car. It's a beautiful cabin. And we're gonna about to drive up to this cat. It's about maybe 45 minutes north of us. But I just thought I had to video the shooting. When I drove up, there was so much noise coming from all directions. I felt this is very country. your little beautiful woods. Have a great day.
Oh my god, this is totally cute. I know, it's so cute. Oh, it's really cabiny. And so we're in Virginia. We just got off the Blue Ridge Parkway. This view. Oh my god. I made a big deal about this driveway, but it was pretty scary going backwards. And look at, I mean, literally, it goes right off that hill. This is lovely. This is why North Carolina and Virginia are so special. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is kind of what I pictured when you were telling me. Oh, you might have sent me a couple photos too. But all of this is windows. Oh yeah, and they get to see the view. What a beautiful, so is this sunrise or sunset? That's gonna be sunset, so we're gonna <gasps> be looking at the sunset going on. And they got a fireplace. Oh, this is really special. I can totally see why they bought this. And they couldn't get you to buy the next door, huh? No, it's not as cute. <laughs> oh, it's not as cute. Okay, so what's this? What's this bedroom? Oh, that's the, the main bedroom. Oh, our happy place. Nice. Nice closet. Yeah, it feels like a little bit of it, like a ship. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So this is the little kitchen. Totally perfect. And then, um... Perfect, yeah. The little bathroom that goes to the bedroom. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Totally nice. And then there's two bedrooms upstairs. I love the stonework and I love the wood. Oh, and there's like a oh yeah, like a little seating area up here. And then there's oh, what's back here? Oh, a little sink. Oh, oh my God, I love it. This is charming. This is so charming. And is this, oh, is this a bathroom? Oh, okay, yeah, just like a small little privy. You get to look down, oh my God, this is too much. Yeah, because you could even put like a sleeper couch you here. Could, yeah. I mean, getting it up the stairs would right. be an issue. But... I slept on this before, and it's actually yeah. quite comfortable. No, of course. So... But I mean, still, you could mm -hmm. make this even like a little, I have a TV. A little bedroom. Oh, no, look at this. Look at this. What a beautiful. Yeah, no, I love trees. I'm definitely more of a tree person than I am like a ocean person. I like oceans, but in all honesty, I like trees. Good morning, trees. Hello. Oh, God. This is so cute. So happy we finally got here. It wasn't a long drive at all. Yeah, like 45 minutes. I think I missed the most beautiful part of the sunrise, sunset, but this is pretty great. It smells so good out here. Oh my gosh. I hear a helicopter or some kind of plane or something. This is the morning. Oh my gosh. The sun came up around 7.45, I guess. It's so beautiful. There's a little 
little bit of breeze. Yeah, it's brisk. It's super fall-like. It's really gorgeous. We're driving the Blue Ridge Park right today, and this is a famous mill called Mayberry Mill. And it's funny because even though we were a little bit west of this, honestly, Mayberry Mill is probably 30, 35 minutes north of our house. So I'm really actually close to my house. It's funny. It's a beautiful old mill that you can kind of see like metal workers and a lot of people here today because this is um, Columbus Day or Indigenous People Day. So pretty. Scott and I used to come up here every now and then to, um, I have to wonder where that building is, to um, have breakfast because they're famous for their sweet potato pancakes. There's lots of people out because it's the most perfect fall day and we're literally right off the Blue Ridge Parkway. It's like a little aqueduct. I know, right? Oh, I thought I needed to. Yeah. So old fashioned. Yeah. She's recording. Well, now. I know. <laughs> hey, everybody. We're, <laughs> we're doing our touristy North Carolina stuff. So, this is probably how they um, powered the mill, right? To yes. make their, their grains. In the past, you'd have people, see like this is the blacksmith shop. We'd, you'd have people doing stuff, telling you what, how they're doing it. Kind of like old Salem, in Winston-Salem. Oh, somebody is, oh, oh, okay. Talking about like um, fabrics. beautiful tree. I don't know if I've been in here before. All of them are tagged so you can read about what the different wool is dyed with. But they would use tree bark, they would use acorn, they would use onion skin. Oh my gosh, these baskets. So that I would make those tapestry. Those rugs we see all over. Mm -hmm. yeah, typically rag rugs they would make or table runners. But this is a hundred fifty year old loom, probably chestnut wood. Be typically in a barn because the family had six children. They would sleep upstairs. Parents would be down here. And they didn't have room for a loom. <laughs> so the room the loom would be in the barn. This is called the barn loom. And it would take two people a full day to warp the loom, which is prepare the loom for weaving. Um, because there's that many threads to go through that many places. So we just drove a little bit farther in the Blue Ridge and we saw a trail. And there's this river. I 
I think we're gonna walk towards a waterfall. The water, yeah. It is so relaxing. We're in the Blue Ridge Music Center. And they have music during the day. But this is like the little museum of the different instruments that I guess just over the years, you know, the uh, history, lineage. Oh, interesting. In the 1960s, he toured the nation with a brilliant band that included Doc Watson, Clint Howard, and Fred Bryant. So I guess they have music here, probably in the afternoons, every afternoon. You know, during the summer, up through October. There's a walking path behind the music center, and this is one of the scenes you'll see in the easy, easy, moderate little hiking trail. This definitely is typical North Carolina with the rolling green and the hay field, you know, the hay barrels. It's very pretty. I think we turn right. I wonder if you can hear the little animals. I 
I don't know what they are, if they're frogs or crickets or... You can also hear traffic, which is sad. But the Blue Ridge Parkway is only two miles from here. This is like the fancy gap area. I wish you could have smell vision because you know when it's like brisk and you go outside and all you smell are leaves and kind of wildflowers. Hmm. It's absolutely gorgeous weather. I mean, you don't need a jacket at all. I guess way, way, way over there is, that is Highway 77. You know, it goes from Virginia down into North Carolina. But we are, we take 52. So 52 is just before that. But goodbye cabin. It has been so fun. Goodbye cabin. I mean, that sounds like a little bird. We made it to the um, American Airlines Admirals Club in Charlotte. I like to get here a little bit early. I don't think we've actually been to this club before, but it was pretty easy. I mean, except for being, me being yelled at a tiny bit during security, it was okay. <laughs> so now we're gonna watch movies on our laptop and I'm gonna do some emails, sit comfy, go grab something to eat and um, wait for our flight to Los Angeles. Oh, I get to look at um, cars. Maybe see if there's some other funner shots out the window. We're in our Uber going to our hotel and there's this major cloudy gray overcast. I just think we, it feels like we're in a science fiction movie. This is the cool lobby restaurant. It's very artsy. The building is so ancient. I love it. They still have things from like the 20s and 30s. So we're in Hotel Figueroa and it's kind of like an artsy retro. I, it almost seems like it's an old building that has been retrofitted and, and like it's really close to like the Staples Center. Um, the hallways are, you know, artsy and funky. And we look down over the street here and, and like the stable center like crypto center is just like a block that way yeah kind of interesting bed i guess that's like an adjoining room and what's this look at it i mean everything just looks like it's really like old kind of like look at this tiny little hallway here what's this oh okay just a hall just a Okay, let's see what the bathroom, oh, okay, interesting. Old fashioned tile, where's the light? Okay, oh, they put artsy wallpaper, oh, hello. No, I, it looks like they renovated it. It's just the bones are like an old building. All right, and we, oh, did you change the air conditioning? Cause it was freezing in here. It's a nice big bed. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, good. We're starving and we're hungry. This is behind the scenes. Me filming Scott and Scott filming me. So I did bring this acetone because I guess when Scott and I packed our paintings, we you know made oh look at this. Okay, interesting, Scott. Very artsy of you. Um, we saw this ginormous Logan painting. Holy cow, I bet you it's already sold and I bet you he's just like storing it back here. Holy cow, look at that. I mean, I'm gonna say that that's about eight feet tall by eight by 12 or 15. Oh my gosh. 
We came in early because um, when we shipped my painting over here, when Bo opened it up, some of that, you guys saw in the last video when we put the painting in the crate, we were stupid. We always pack our paintings in like a big plastic, you can get those clear plastic bags, you know, or garbage bags, depending on how big the painting is. And um, we just didn't because we thought that, usually you do that because you wanna protect it from weather. You want to protect it from rain and the crate was so sturdy and the you know the foam core was so big that we just put it right in there but i guess some of the um electric magnetic or something who knows um some of the little bits of tiny little styrofoam like stuck to the painting and when he when Bo sent me a photo of it you could tell because the painting is so dark now scott said that if that had happened to this painting you probably wouldn't even notice it unless it was like in our hair. But um, but I actually went and bought acetone and we came over here early on Friday so that I could go in there and take a tiny little brush and because acetone dissolves that foam core. And um, Bo did an excellent job. I think he just used water. So we can't see any. We cannot see anything. So <laughs> I think Bo just has maybe, you know, he's trying to make everything perfect. So here is Scott and me being hung together. And there's still, you know, the preview is tonight. So, oh, they're gonna put some lights. I kind of love this, man. Look at, we get like a behind the scenes, what's happening. And Scott and I also were thinking, because we knew that there were like 33 artists in this show. And, um, and Bo asked for big paintings. So I thought he was gonna have to have partitions in here, but he actually is renting the space next door. Wow, and it's, you know, I've seen these paintings on Instagram, but I had no idea how big they were. I think in the vid video, the painting is coming out a little bit dark because of like the white wall and the strong spotlight on it. Um, but this painting isn't as dark. They're supposed sweeping. I just helped put um, swag into these bags and we're just getting things together, doing behind the scenes. I'm so glad that Scott and I were here early, but all, every single collector and person is coming to dinner tonight. A hundred people are gonna get a bag with a t-shirt, magazine, some stuff that Bo has made up specially. Oh my gosh. Now it's good to be useful. And um, these flowers came. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Look at this. I mean, that's not, this doesn't hurt, but there's a special flower, but this would hurt. In fact, I was asking the, the delivery guy when he showed up, I said, did it hurt you kind of carrying this? Cause he wasn't wearing any sleeves. He said a little. <laughs> Look at this, oh, what is that? Oh my God. So this looks like an evergreen thing. This is, I've never seen a flower arrangement never seen oh oh congrats on 10 years <gasps> oh okay let me put that right there and then look at these are like orchids special orchids this is really unusual i want to see if these orchids smell they do they do so there's oh what's this oh so here's a postcard okay so this is a postcard for the show so those were sent out and he has a whole bunch left, I guess. I can't wait to see what what's, it looks like next door. Oh my gosh. So I did see a tiny bit of, and it, you could only see the, that little bit of styrofoam in my painting only if you turn the spotlight off. I think it's because the light was coming from above. But once he had just the fluorescence, it was so subtle, but just dabbing my brush in the acetone and just like touching it, it disappeared because it does, um, disintegrate. So I think these are Logan sculptures. And these are, I can't name everybody, but I'm probably gonna film some more tomorrow. I love seeing these paintings in person. They look, everybody's paintings just look better. And also, I just wanna remind you that the paintings are coming off, maybe the teensy's a bit dark because the walls are so white. There's a cover of Western Art Magazine Oh my gosh, this is a very, you know, it's a very kind of artsy, lofty looking space. I'm 
me see what they're doing back here. I'm going to sneak. Oh, they're hanging a big David Casson. Can I just um, remind everybody that tonight is the preview? <laughs> I just want to remind you that. He's getting the bags together. There's a huge dinner for collectors coming in from all over the country. And they're literally hanging a painting right now. So. Yep. I can't even imagine all the stuff he's had to do, so. So you guys are hanging a David Casson? <laughs> Did it just arrive or? Yeah. No, I know. I'm just teasing because it's like literally in just a few hours. It's kind of like um, a reality show or something. Oh, I want to show you this Thomas Blackshear. I love this. Look at this. So this looks like it definitely is. This is not paint. This is looks like it's wood. Scott, did you see this? Did you see how this is carved in wood? Isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah. So this is actually raised. It's hard to see, but yeah, it's actually raised off the well, painting. Well, I think this is probably a canvas behind it. This is probably a wood panel yeah, yeah. that he cut it out of. No, yeah. no, no, but this is raised from that. Oh, this whole thing was added on. Yeah. Well, even this is cut yeah. out too. The, no, and remember wood. I told you, I bought that, that little tool that we can do carving, and I, I didn't even think about doing something like this. I was thinking about carving into frames, but that is Thomas. He's so creative. Yeah. Anyways, so really, really cool. Oh, there's all kinds of tools in here. Probably old catalogs, lots of drinks. I guess, yeah, I'm getting thirsty. I'm actually getting hot. Oh, Scott is so dirty from moving stuff around. But, you know, that's guys for you. Um, Bo was really, I, I think he was joking, but I don't think so. He wanted me to make sure that all these bags didn't smash each other. How I was gonna do that in three boxes is, I think he's like um, a little OCD. Didn't want anything to get smushed. But it is, they're going to get smushed. I'll video more later. Oh, let me see the same This painting looks amazing in person. It really is. I rarely get to see David's work like up close. We're trying to figure out how to hang this huge painting vertical on this big wall. So how much you want about what? Uh, I did I did max even 40 plus 58, that's the height, minus 18.25. Ten minutes later. Bo and Scott are competing to see who is the most, let's say, um, adorably controlling. I don't really want them to hear me say this stuff, but it's kind of funny. It's like two elks butting horns. Bo is just trying to be really polite and let Scott take over because you really just have to. Even like me going to CVS earlier, so funny like i just have to smile and just you know take a deep breath and let him kindly give me advice about what to buy <laughs> oh <laughs> we need help you know that we're going to be the hardest one to sell so. we don't have any cowboy hats or <laughs> Our girl, I was just going to say, our girls aren't even naked. So we have forced Bo to put some more lights in this back room. See, that's good. This is what we... I just want to show that Bo is making me fold these things. It is super annoying because everyone has a edge 
and this is what's going to go for the sculptures. So he's he's not saying we could just put the tape stuff on these. I have to. And he's yes. Oh, okay. I have to come in and help now. They got it out. Oh my god, so fast. I couldn't even. <gasps> okay. So that is the back. This is the alley. They're obviously doing construction. Oh, here's the painting. Oh my gosh. Look at what's happening in here. Look at. Okay, so I guess these are the caterers. This is just a big giant space that Bo's probably going to take over because he's going to just sell out and become so successful. Totally empty kind of industrial space where the dinner will be tonight. Just showing you behind the scenes. All the work. These people have been here all day working on this. Oh my gosh. So I think he's going to hang some stuff in here. I just don't know how much. It's getting there. Wow, it's pretty amazing. It's actually very cold in here. All right. That's going to look really nice up. Oh my God, this noise over here is too much. I'm exhausted. It's two o'clock. We've been here since a little after 10, working. <sighs> it's worth it. I mean, the show is amazing, but I literally, I'm just beat. I didn't sleep well. Honestly, the noise from the streets at our hotel was just crazy and um, just maybe overly exhausted. But I was just finishing up doing these um, sculptures, doing these little tags, and I was, I was getting so, Bo is gonna hate that. Look at how crooked that is. He's gonna hate it. <laughs> Here's Lorena, Bo's very sweet girlfriend. She's coming to help him. Oh my God. I just want to go to sleep. I want to eat and I want to go to sleep. Oh, and then we have to come back. Yay. Right, pump myself up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sue is being put to work. I have to have clean fingers and I have to make them equal and they have to look perfect. <laughs> That's why they didn't give me this job. Mm -hmm. I don't have any of that stuff. This whole nice. thing of me doing all these paintings is probably going to take an hour. And we were joking with Bo, like, when did he think he was going to do this? We offered to help, and he's like, oh, I can yeah, do but something. I mean, like, jokingly, like, Bo, how did you, how did you plan <laughs> to do all this? And he's like, hmm. he just went with the flow. I'm like, we weren't even supposed to be here. So, like, I know, but we're happy good to do stuff. It's kind of like we're happy to like, be, you know, so that you know, brownie points. <laughs> I just, you know, my, you know what I'm scared of? I'm scared that I'm going to put the wrong price on the wrong painting. Right. Because I'm, I'm only going by size, and I'm hoping to God there's not two paintings of the exact same size. Right. Because I'm just going, oh, well, what is this? I'm guessing it's 22 by 40? Okay. <laughs> I think you'll do it. I hope so. figure out which yeah. which sticker goes with which well painting. i do i want you know the people i haven't met sometimes they get their names like right so and you can never tell by like the titles right it's like the titles means i know <laughs> 
Hey, this is David Grossman, and he's like fixing a little touch-up of his painting, and he's doing it in such a professional way. Let's see, let's see how it goes. <laughs> no, I mean that's that's integrity, because I was telling him that I would just use rub and buff, but he's really gonna gild it. So his dad makes these frames, these beautiful frames, so that you can tell that they're they're stained, and then they're just gilded on the top, and they're super deep. Oh, so you actually paint on a very deep kind of board. Yeah, I just, I just switched to this deeper profile. I was having some warping issues with, oh. with thinner panels. So you're doing it for stability. Okay. Well, that's good to know. It, well, it also kind of looks impressive, too, to have like a kind of a deeper frame. You know, it looks impressive. And so these are David's paintings. Now, I, I was telling him how I put the stickers up, but it's a little bit wonky. We're just hoping people don't notice. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is a very busy evening, and I've been talking to a lot of artists. Scott is chatting, doing lots of small talk, talking to people about their paintings and meeting artists for the first time. It's a hopping, hopping, hopping. I don't really know who most of these people are, but they made me put a name tag on. So I guess they're gonna come up to me if they're interested. They have security and they have lots of hors d'oeuvres, but we're about to have dinner. Here's Joseph Todorovic. <laughs> um, in the gallery, it was so hot and very hard to talk to people. Much nicer in here. And luckily, there are seat assignments. So we were able to find our seats over here. Oh, okay. So I am right here next to Sean Smith. And I think across from David Casson. But no, I, it's good. I was wondering where we were going to sit. I don't know if you noticed, maybe you didn't. Which, so please, please keep me honest. Bob, thank you for that wonderful introduction. As mentioned, please turn your chairs, make yourselves comfortable, make sure that you can clearly see me. If you cannot clearly see me, if you cannot, if you're not comfortable, the next 30 minutes, fuck. <laughs> Just say. Well, with that out of the way, as mentioned, my name is Siegfried, Siegfried Peter. My you guys have a really tight-knit group. Um, in some ways, I think that you have to go back to the Tau Society of Artists or the Cowboy Artists of America. And what you guys have is sort of like the new, the new <laughs> CA. I don't want to say the new CA, but it's sort of what I'm sort of hinting at. What you're doing is really exciting. I think people know that the artist, an artist shows with Maxwell Alexander, that that's, that's sort of an exclusive thing. Uh, how much time do you spend looking for new talent and looking for new artists? I mean, is this something you're always doing about? Logan and I are, you know, constantly sending each other images of different artists. And, you know, I, to be honest, it's, it's a no, basically, 100% of the time. Oh my God. You know, we have, we have such a, a high level that we want to stick to. We have such an aesthetic that we want to stick to. Logan has contemporary artists in this stable and a lot of them here. And uh, those guys have been on the um, Temporary but this gallery has been succeeding in it's bringing an old idea or an old you know, traditional uh, iconic mm -hmm. subject matter into the you know, into the, the now the contemporary, but in a way in a new and fresh way. And um, when I got the mic, I just got to thank them for being the part. It's it's wonderful.
getting stuck because there's such incredibly nice people saying hi to me and um, it is pretty exciting to be in a, a, um, an opening like this. I have not been into an opening this crowded in a long time. Hey! <laughs> no, they revved everybody up with that talk. So it was, it's a good idea to get people thinking about art, how important art is, um, a lot of the people are coming here who even live, live in LA for the first time are coming to this gallery, um, you know, for the first time. And I mean, I just met a young woman artist from Santa Fe who flew in just to see this. So good energy. gallery with Michael Klein and Stephen Gefron and Scott. It is so gorgeous out here. The gallery, I felt like I was going to pass out, like literally pass out. So Steve's videoing me while I video him, but I just thought it was fun to watch this train line here. I ha We've been walking from the gallery to the hotel every day and I have not seen this, so I, don't, I didn't even know this existed. Great, $2,000. It was so funny, so it's a great story. It was pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. It's gloomy out, but there is water right there. We are very close to it, you're right. That was the view I was wanting. I know. Yep, no, there's water out there. So we're in Ventura right now? Okay. We're getting there. Anyways, I, I don't know. I, it's I, I so gloomy. We just made it. Oh, an Ojai ice cream truck. So we're in, I guess, Ojai. It's still cloudy. It's kind of a residential area. But I guess Bo has this beautiful property here. Oh, this is nice. Hi, hello. <laughs> So yeah, when we drove up, I was surprised to see all of these tables. I felt like we're coming to a wedding. I had no idea it was going to be this big a deal. I just really had no idea. Oh, that must be Logan's studio. Oh my God, my ankle is, my feet, first of all, I banged my toe on the hard bed. So I'm limping on left foot. And for some reason, my left ankle is swollen, so it's hitting against my boot. I banged myself. I'm probably flying. Hi. Oh, it smells good. So this is so interesting. It's really gloomy and cloudy. So there's Logan. This is neat. So he says he has a collection of surfboards because he likes to surf, but he also likes to collect that. Should have dressed warmer as usual. This is kind of fun. Probably outfits and hats that he has his models wear. Oh, I love how organized he is with his little paint tubes. Oh, two screens, very high tech. in here though i mean i wonder if he's able to like heat this yeah he probably does see his split heater oh okay no but okay right above him. oh i actually feel air conditioning so maybe we can... <laughs> wow i love these little paintings are probably from his kids yeah beautiful clouds beautiful um yeah, I actually like looking up close at the paintings because a lot of times you can see like little subtle bits of like brush strokes and textures. 
that from far away you don't really see. Oh, there you go. Yeah, this kid's painting thing. Oh my God, I'm so cold. Should have wore tights. Well, it's not only because it's freezing, but he also has air conditioning. Look, it says 62. Oh yeah. That is. He likes to keep it. Oh nice. my gosh. What's he doing to us? <laughs> oh, this one's nice. Yeah, this looks like a. It looks like a six by nine. It's hard to tell from the video how big these are, and these look like maybe 12 by 12. Oh, look at this nice bookcase. It goes the whole length. Oh, a fun bathroom. Oh my gosh, I got a film in here. This is so fun. Oh, no way. Okay, that's too much. That's one of those Japanese, like, like, I don't know who this is. It almost looks like maybe like a Steve Houston. I don't know. I don't know who did that. Oh, maybe that's Tim. Oh, maybe that's Tim Lawson. It just says T A L. I bet you that is Tim Lawson. Looks like he's buying old illustrations. That's fun. A Josh Elliott. That toilet cracks me up. Oh, that's a really neat frame. Yeah, I like this uh, bookcase. The toilet is one of those computerized ones. When I walked in there, the lid went up. It's so funny. Is your studio where? Right by your home? Or? Yes. Obviously, these are like studies that he would do for bigger paintings. Oh, goodness. That's a good, that's a nice table. I like a really, really big work table. So he doesn't have skylights. He just has like that window, but I don't know if that's north. So primarily he's just working from these, you know, kind of LED or fluorescence. So it's, yeah, it's like a, just a, it's a huge like st building that you would have for like maybe, you know, Winnebago's or something. Oh, look at this, another computer. <laughs> so, artists are coming. They said there's going to be about over a hundred people coming today. Okay, I'll film more later. I don't know how long it was, but Bo talked about the idea of having people come out to visit. I think that could be fun. Like I said, you'll be about, there's some people coming out from Denver, so there'll be like 30, 40 people. Sure, 30, 40 people. And then about a week and a half ago, it goes, so we have 105 RSVPs so far. <laughs> and then I invited a bunch of friends from Ohio, so I don't know how many people are actually here, but I look like this in my back pocket. And um, so this I started January 7th and finished it January 16th. So I'm constantly pulling it out and drawing. So I'll just out of my head come up with ideas i'll just like stream of consciousness i don't know if you could see these but just draw little ideas landscapes um, in this particular book um and a totally stream of consciousness like and, and I, what i might do is if i do something that i kind of like um i'll be where you are but sometimes what i'll do to force myself um I might say, okay, I'm gonna do this this format, like a vertical rectangular format. 
and I'm going to make myself do three of an idea, like whatever it is. If it's maybe I'm doing a, a, a drawing of cactus or um, a drawing of clouds, I'll, I'll sort of play with the composition. of them and, and, and see what I can do with that. Um, and then I might even cha change the lighting effect a little bit. So for whatever reason right now, I want to, instead of the cliffs being in light, I'm going to throw the cliffs into shadow here. And then to kind of help, I, I think about light and dark next to each other and how those uh, the big shapes and, and values, how, how light or dark something is, how they affect each other. So I'm going to take this whole section of land here and throw it into shadow so that the foreground sort of pops out a little bit more. And I'll keep that same sort of direction of light on these pieces of sagebrush here. Um, restrictions on myself so the same format and the same theme and just kind of forcing myself to be creative and come up with different ways of doing the same thing over and over you'll if you know anything about my work I, I revisit the theme quite often and um, it's two reasons I think part of it is I feel like I'm still trying I'm searching and trying to figure out maybe I haven't reached the goal that I have set in my head somewhere I don't know that I can um, verbalize the goal, but it's just like a feeling. So if I'm not done with something, I just keep working on it or, or a theme. And then secondly from there, it's like when you, when I, I found that when I stick with a subject and force myself to paint it over and over, I, I go deeper and, and discover new things. And I always talk about like, I, I relate it to cooking. Like if you were gonna make like a pasta sauce and you tried it once, it's gonna be like, okay. But if you work on it over years and years, you're gonna develop your own amazing recipe. So if I come, keep coming back to something, I make it my own and, and um, weird things start to happen. And, and you know, sometimes good, sometimes not so good, but you know. Which I don't know that I like this, but I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, I'll force myself to do a few more. So now I'm kind of, now that I know where I screwed up on this, I'm going to plan for it. So I'm kind of lightly trying to draw in some of the proportions of the thing a little bit better um, and go from there. With drawing or painting, it's all about relationships. It's the color relationships, how warm a color is, how cool a color is, um, how light or dark that color is. Um, there's all... So we're leaving and the sun finally came out. We're walking down the street and this is where Logan lives. Everything just looks like it's kind of stayed in time. Oh, wait. There's like some, I guess, what are those? Uh, sheep, maybe? So Andrew, a nice guy, is driving us back to the hotel. Otherwise, we'd, who knows, we could have gotten fine. We could have gotten a ride with somebody, but. But no, happy to see the mountains come out. It's so rural, like look at this yard. Very farm-like.
So we got here early to the airport and have had a lovely Uber driver. And we're in the club, it's very 60s. But I'm gonna go watch tennis while Scott sits here and writes on his laptop. Or now Scott's moving. <laughs> we're always trying to find a better seat.